Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to interstitiallungdisease.info. In this episode, I'd like to tackle this difficult concept about survival in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And this is because lately, I've been getting a lot of these questions in clinic. So a lot of patients who come to be reviewed as their first initial consultation in an ILD service, in the interstitial lung disease service, they have this worry that basically pulmonary fibrosis is automatically associated with a, diag with a survival of only three to five years. And that's actually not entirely true. There are a lot of nuances that I'd like to touch upon. The first one is that when people look up pulmonary fibrosis, as I've said in different videos before, we end up finding information about only one condition, which is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. This just means lung scarring of an unknown cause. It is a specific diagnosis. It's a diagnosis of exclusion. So we arrive at a diagnosis of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis when we eliminate other potential causes. And you can imagine that even in the case of IPF, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, different centers, different doctors, will rule out more or less things. So it's there's we can only rule out so many things before we can call it unknown cause. So this is an important concept. Let me just go back on that because it's really, really important. So when we make a diagnosis of IPF or idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, we have to rule out things. We don't rule things in, we rule them out. So we eliminate potential causes, whether it's rheumatological disease, occupational exposures that are not sufficient to cause the scarring in the lungs, and we arrive at this diagnosis of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Now, the middle number when we talk about survival in IPF is indeed three to five years from diagnosis. However, that is the middle number. The most important thing to consider is how quickly is the fibrosis or the scarring progressing? How is the disease behaving? And actually, we see a lot of patients in our clinics who have had a diagnosis of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or a working diagnosis of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis for maybe seven, eight or more years, and they're still relatively well. At the same time, there can be patients who progress really quickly. Their fibrosis really gets um, really, really quickly worse. In those situations, indeed, the survival may be less or it may be more, but it all depends on how symptoms are. Now, I am not your doctor. Let me just underline this. Your situation will be different. Everything that I'm saying on this channel, you need to take it with a pinch of salt. You need to discuss with your own healthcare providers what the diagnosis of pulmonary fibrosis means in your case whether it is indeed idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or an unknown cause, and what you may expect in terms of progression. I think it's important to be realistic about that. But generally, the three to five years survival is a middle number, a median survival. That just means the middle in a large group of individuals. So if we look at that only, you can see that there will be patients who survive much longer than that, or some people who survive a bit less than that. But generally, I would say that with good observation, regular lung function, regular follow-up, potentially going on anti-scarring medication or anti-fibrotic medication, we can probably alter that number to gain time. So this is really important. And the second thing I would like to underline before uh, I finish this video is that not all cases of pulmonary fibrosis are idiopathic. That is, in many cases of pulmonary fibrosis, we can actually find a cause. So lung scarring can be triggered, for example, by occupational exposures, and that has a different prognosis. Or it can be triggered by rheumatological disease. So for example, a condition affecting the joints, such as rheumatoid arthritis, can also affect the lungs. And in those cases, you do have pulmonary fibrosis, you do have lung scarring, but it is in the, con it is in the context of that other condition. So it won't have the same prognosis. If we can treat the joints, generally, we can also treat the fibrosis. We can stabilize the condition. Different treatments may be tried. You may be on anti-inflammatory medication for the rheumatological disease, which will stabilize the lungs. But in addition to that, if the scarring is still progressing despite that treatment, you're on stable treatment for this immunological condition, but we can also add antifibrotic, anti-scarring medications in some circumstances if the disease is still progressing. So there are ways to treat pulmonary fibrosis depending on the case that may work better or worse than in other, in, from case to case. So it really, really depends on the diagnosis. There can be sometimes other 
environmental exposures that lead to a hypersensitivity reaction in the lungs. This is called hypersensitivity pneumonitis, which is again a diagnosis in which if we can identify the trigger and remove it, probably the condition will stabilize. And if it is getting worse, we may again resort to anti-scarring medications in certain circumstances, depending on the indication and the individual circumstances. Now, there's no one standardized approach for patients who suffer with interstitial lung disease or pulmonary fibrosis. It depends on the cause. It's important to try to find the cause that we can correct if possible. And if not, to try to consider anti-scarring medication if that will work in individual cases. But please discuss this with your doctor to have clarity what the diagnosis means in your case, how your condition is behaving, how you can monitor it over time, and if there's anything else you need to be doing. Hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you in future videos. All the best.